Hi guys, Jamie from Boxing Life and welcome back to another Boxing List video. Today's video, I'll be looking at 10 boxers who look to take over the middleweight division over the next few years. With the likes of Canelo Alvarez moved up to super middleweight, Golovkin at the end of his career, and even Andre talking about potentially moving up in weight soon, I'm expecting much change in the division over the next few years. With the middleweight category being one of the original glamour divisions, there's always been great interest by fans and boxing fanatics. But who could be that next star in the division? In this boxing list video, I take a look at 10 boxers who could potentially fight it out over the next few years to become the number one middleweight. I've based this list off current activity, achievements, and their talent from when I first published this list. Some of the fighters are yet to fight at middleweight, but I wouldn't be surprised if many of them move up in weight over the next few years. On that note, let's get right into it. Number 1. Jaime Munguia The young and hard-working Mexican is only in his mid-twenties and has already amassed 37 victories with 30 KOs. Having won his first world title against Saddam Ali in 2018 for the WBO Super Welterweight title, Mongea has not stopped with six defences of his title before deciding to move up to middleweight. At six foot, he's definitely big enough and could even move up in weight if he does well at middleweight. But personally, I love his come forward approach, but I've noticed some holes in his game where he gets hit too cleanly at times. Let's hope we can see him fight some other top names on this list and potentially fight for a world middleweight title. Number two, Zanabek Alim Hanula. This Kazakh fighter could definitely potentially take over from Gennady Golovkin as the number one fighter from Kazakhstan. Another hard-hitting Kazakh who's impressed in his amateur career with a gold at the 2013 World Championships. He did fail to win an Olympic medal in 2016 after losing in the quarterfinals. Soon after that, he did decide to turn pro. Since going professional, the Kazakh has looked impressive and he definitely has the potential to win or challenge for a world title. Ali Manola's toughest test yet was against former WBA regular champion Rob Brandt, where he put in a very convincing display. I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops over the next couple of years. Number 3. Felix Cash Cash is probably a wild card for most in this list, but the Brit has been building him up since his debut on the Joshua Brazil undercard in 2016. Since then, Cash has gone on to win the British and Commonwealth titles fairly convincingly. For me, he's not been moved along quickly enough with Eddie Hearn's matchroom and has definitely been seen as a background fighter to most. However, he always comes to fight and definitely has that knockout power to take out anyone in my opinion. I'd love to see him get a big fight soon on the world stage to see if he has what it takes to challenge or even win a world title at some stage. Number 4. Jermel Charlo Jermel Charlo is currently fighting in the super welterweight division and has the potential to fight at middleweight. Just like his identical twin brother, he has won world titles at super welterweight and was close to becoming undisputed until he was held to a draw by Argentine Castano, potentially could have lost his titles. He does get the rematch with Castano and wins. I can't see him staying at the weight too long, and I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to try dominate the middleweight division with his brother. I recommend you check out my short breakdown analysis video on Jermar Charlo if that interests you. Number 5. Jermar Charlo Of course, I can't miss out the Charlo twin in this list, and that is of course Jermar Charlo. Having moved up to middleweight already in 2019, he's already operated at the weight. Jermar is definitely considered the harder puncher of the two brothers, with 22 KOs compared to his brother's 18. However, I believe Jermar has had the harder fights of the two. With him pretty settled there right now, it would be good to see Jermar get a unification fight with the likes of Andrade, Golovkin, or even fight another potential on this list. It'll be interesting to see how he progresses in this division. Number 6. Tim Zhu The son of former light welterweight world champion Costa Zhu so far is definitely living up to the hype in my opinion and looks like he has the potential to be just as good as his dad. The Australian definitely has that knockout power with 15 KOs on his record to date. So far, he's only fought in the super welterweight division, but I think he's definitely good enough to move up in the weight eventually. He is the same height as Canelo and in my opinion packs a punch just like the Mexican star. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Tim Zhu's career will progress once he starts to fight regularly on the world stage. Number 7. Chris Eubank Jr. 
Chris had a pretty mixed career to date, switching between middleweight and super middleweight divisions. Having signed a recent deal with Sky in the UK, he will be going into the final part of his career hoping to get some big fights and, of course, win a legit world title. Every time Eubank Jr. has stepped up in opposition against Lex Billy Joe Saunders or George Gross, he has fallen short in earning victory but has still been relatively competitive. His big win to date was against former gold Olympic medalist James DeGaulle where he won pretty convincingly. He's definitely one of the only ones right now calling out the likes of Golovkin. I'm not sure if Eubank Jr. will win a world title but I can see him definitely getting one last chance. Number 8. Erickson Lubin when Lubin first burst onto the scene, he was a guy that could potentially challenge the Charlo brothers for their world titles at super welterweight. However, getting his match up against Jermel Charlo, he suffered a devastating KO and has been rebuilding himself ever since. With Lubin only in his mid-twenties, he definitely still has a few more years at super welterweight, but I could see him operating at middleweight eventually. The Southpaw had a really good display against Rosario, and if he keeps progressing, he could potentially get a rematch with Charlo at middleweight. Number 9. Jarrett Hurd Now for some of you, you will probably think Hurd should not be on this list, but I do believe he has the potential to bounce back after those two high profile defeats to Julian Williams and Luis Arias. First off, He's always looked huge for super welterweight, and I can only imagine it's a real struggle for him to get down to that weight. Now in his early 30s, maybe a new start at middleweight looks like a good opportunity for him to get back to the top. This could help him make weight more comfortably. Having been unified world champion already, he definitely has enough draw to get a fight at that weight, and maybe he can finally get that fight with one of the Charlo brothers, which I would love to see. Number 10. Magomed Kurbanov. The Russian from Dagestan was a former world youth champion in 2008 at Bantamweight. Since then, the Russian has grown into his body and is currently operating at super middleweight. He's a very interesting fighter to watch as he fights in a Philly shell stance, which is something you wouldn't expect to see from a typical Eastern European fighter. He does have power, but it's his defense and skill set that could take him quite far in his career. Standing at 5'10", he's definitely big enough to compete at middleweight, and I personally can see him fighting there eventually. His last display, however, against Liam Smith was far from his best, probably should not have won that fight. He's still definitely one I would keep an eye out to take over the middleweight division. Bonus Boxer to finish up, I just wanted to add in a bonus boxer, and if you haven't guessed already, that is of course, Gennady Golovkin. Believe it or not, I still wouldn't be surprised if Golovkin continues to fight for at least another 2-3 to three years. He's only fought once this year, which is pretty disappointing, but it does make you think what's going on there. Maybe it's just been difficult for him to get a fight just because of the situation, because of you know what going on in the world. But maybe he's also waiting that fight with Murata, which will finally happen in Japan. The Japanese like to do a fight on New Year's Eve. That would make sense to have a big fight between Golovkin and Murata on that day. Whatever is going on regardless, I could still see Triple G beating all the middleweights on this list currently. But with him taking so much time off, it does make me concerned if he does go back in the ring and it'll be interesting to see how much longer he will fight for. On that note guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to comment below, let me know your thoughts, who you think will be the middleweight champ. If I've missed anyone out, make sure to comment below and let me know, I'd be interested to find out. Another note guys, sorry I've got a bit of a cold, so that's probably why I might have sounded a bit funny in this video. As always, hit that like button, really helps out the channel. And if you're new here, you can subscribe. If you have any other suggestions like this video, comment below, I'd love to know. On that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.